Well, hi everyone. I am Bill Skeet from Noble Media, and today I'm pleased to share our project for the AI and Local News Ch Challenge. Uh, Noble Media is a mission-based startup that uses AI to deliver high-quality content to advertisers. Our technology was originally designed for consumers um, to identify harmful content such as misinformation, but we pivoted when we realized that the digital advertising model allows pub publishers to profit from that kind of content and it exploits advertisers in the process. Noble's committed to reforming this model so that programmatic advertising investments are directed to high quality content, including journalism and local news. Before we get too far into this, it might be helpful to kind of review how programmatic advertising works at a high level, um, super high level. The goal is to match advertisers with content that will bolster their brand and with readers that are interested in the product or the service. When a reader clicks on a link, a vast complex of systems are initiated to determine what's the best ad to serve to a page. On one side, the demand side platform is targeting uh, the ad to the tar to ideal reader. And on the other side, the supply side platform provides an inventory of content from all kinds of publishers. When a page is viewed, uh, it provides an ad impression for the advertiser. Advertisers pay for these impressions and pages that generate more views will generate more impressions. So the system is designed to financially reward publishers for creating content that's highly engaging, which generates more views and therefore more impressions. Unfortunately, engagement is not the same thing as quality. Clickbait is designed to be engaging and sadly outrageous and offensive content is also highly engaging. Noble focuses on quality. Our solution provides solution, large numbers of high quality pages such as local news that would otherwise be lost in the noise. Local media is uniquely disadvantaged by the system. It favors publishers with large inventories of content and national or global audiences. And of course, it enables unscrupulous publishers to exploit the engagement by creating content that's sensational or provocative. Advertisers want the audiences, but they don't want that kind of content. So ad tech has created tools like inclusion lists and block lists to keep ads clear from potentially harmful content. Unfortunately, these solutions are like chemotherapy and they kill the good with the bad. Inclusion lists typically omit small local publishers and block lists exclude content based on the presence of a term such as COVID-19. These are short-sighted solutions and they defund legitimate journalism and hasten the growth of news deserts. The good news is that advertisers and agencies are increasingly vigilant about where their ads show up and what their ad dollars are supporting. Brands realize that advertising practices need to be aligned with corporate values like DEI, sustainability, and supporting local communities. However, there are challenges for advertisers who want to support local journalism. It can be difficult to work with small local publishers directly, and there are concerns about whether there's enough traffic to meet their goals. Noble Solution bundles a multitude of local publishers of high-quality content into a single segment that can be directly targeted by the advertiser. It allows advertisers to support local publishers without compromising on inventory size or content quality. At the heart of Noble's tech stack is a battery of more than 30 algorithms, including AI models that evaluate the page and the content. Each of these focus on signals of quality, like credibility, sentiment, adverb use, et cetera. Their analysis results in a score, positive if it's a feature consistent with high quality and negative if it's associated with low quality. Those scores are plugged into a formula and that produces an overall page score between negative 10, which is bad, and positive 10, which is good. This is the noble score for a page. In summary, pages with an abundance of high quality characteristics are, are noble pages and sites with an abundance of noble pages are noble domains. For the AI and local news challenge, we wanted to focus on local media publishers and build an inventory of their content for advertisers. Our approach was to start with a known list of legitimate news publishers and use the content from those sites to create an AI model that could identify additional local media sites. Our list of local news publishers uh, that we used for training data contained about 8,000 local news publishers in, from North America. The majority of these came from Northwestern's local news initiative, which was used in the seminal 2022 uh, report on the state of local news. We scraped and scored pages from every site that we could, uh, but some sites had paywalls and others weren't operating. And in the end, we had scraped about 2.6 million pages 
for about 3,300 local media publishers. And 2,067 of those sites were also noble, where the average score of all the pages met the noble quality threshold. Next, we built a new AI model to identify local media. The model was trained with 300,000 local news articles from about 2,300 domains and 300,000 non-local news articles from about 6,000 domains. The goal of this model is to find new local sites that have not been identified. The accuracy, precision, and recall of this model were all above 96%. We ran the model on a sample of set of about a million pages taken from active advertising campaigns and excluding domains that we knew already that were local. Um, that set of pages included about 30,000 domains, of which 3,400 had enough pages for us to derive a reliable domain score. Those 3,400 domains included 227 domains that the AI identified as local, and 200 of those were scored as noble, and 193 of those 200 were domains that were not on our list of known local sites. These results are exciting because the model appears to be excellent at finding the needle in the haystack. So what's next? Our daily operation already processes about a million new pages every day. So as a result, our inventory of local media will organically scale by continuously adding new sites and improve accuracy as it evaluates more and more content. The product will be available to advertisers in the next 60 days. Our challenge is to spread the word to advertisers and agencies about the opportunity. The sooner they use it, the sooner more ad revenue will flow to the local publishers who are essential to keeping our communities connected. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Bill. And let's open it up for questions. Hi, thanks so much. Can you share a little bit about your business model and um, kind of, you know, you shared your noble mission um, and, and all that, but like, you know, how how you monetize this for yourselves. Yeah, Cedar, do you want me to take that? Yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a simple CPM model. Um, so we take a small amount off of each page impression. Uh, so it, uh, the price is, you know, less than a dollar CPM. And just a little bit of color on that. Um, we activate through the SSP side, so then on the supply side. So we're essentially creating a private marketplace deal ID. If you're familiar with the with the advertising uh, space, um, essentially that allows the advertiser to create their campaign, plug in the deal ID, and automatically ensure that all of their content is coming from that inventory set. Um, and essentially, your model is also to bundle these newsrooms for the advertiser to be able to give them the scale while also doing good. Okay, got it. Yeah, exactly. Our, our original product um, was basically looking at is the content quality really high, right? And, and that was across all types of content, whether it was national news or non-news content. And specifically with this new product that we're developing through this challenge, uh, focusing on essentially looking for just focusing on the small news publishers, right? The local news publishers in an inventory set that contains only that set of content, right? Only those publishers. And um, I guess, you know, I know you all have your noble scoring. Can you speak a little bit about some of the dimensions you look at to determine quality to the standard? You want to take that, Bill? Yeah, I'll, I can jump in there. Yeah, so um, so we've got, uh, again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of different indicators that Bill alluded to really started it from a journalistic perspective. So looking at linguistic, natural language processing sorts of measurements, where we're measuring, you know, some things like the, the sentiment uh, we've developed our own uh, internal uh, data sets for measuring uh, things like um, uh, hate speech, uh, different sorts of types of non-credible news. You know, we've developed these models. Uh, again, some of it is very simple and looking at the language construction, looking at the use, the adverb and adjective use. And, uh, you know, working with uh, one of the members of our team actually has a, a, her background and doctorate in uh, news literacy um, and has sort of done research, you know, from a... a um, academic perspective on, you know, the linguistic grammatical characteristics of journalistic language. Um, so that's kind of started that. So there's a lot of measurements there. There's also uh, metadata about the placement of content. So it's not, you know, just 
what the text is, but you know what other advertising is present on a page, um, the relationships between publishers. If we identify uh, known sources of disinformation, uh, there's you know sort of the bad actors, pink slime sites, you know places that are trying to uh, trick you into recognizing or believing content is is credible. You know we will first of all have our own database of that, but look at relationships between those different publishers to understand how that news or that content might be spreading and growing. So a, a lot of different you know individual indicators, some very simple you know NLP text measurement, some that are these um, you know the ML models, um, a set of different ML models that all combine into the set of indicators that then goes into sort of our final proprietary model um, that comes up with the ultimate score. So. Yeah, the big idea is that no one characteristic is, a, you know, the perfect indicator of quality. But um, if you have enough characteristics of quality, the likelihood is that it's a quality article. And of course, if you have a, enough characteristics of low quality, the chances are it's low quality. And, um, and that's essentially how it works. Just real quick, there's two questions in the chat. Um, as far as local publishers set up to, to utilize our ad inventory, they don't need to do anything um, except make sure that they are set up with one of the, the advertising networks and they include an ads on their page. Um, they will be automatically included into our system as we scrape their pages. Um, we do actually work with some local publishers to ensure to, that we can get their content scored by getting past paywalls and things like that. So if they're interested in specifically making sure that they're in the inventory, they can always contact us and we can you know scrape their pages uh, or get content from them directly and then add it into the yeah. to the inventory, assuming it passes all the all the thresholds. And to that question, I think you know what Cedar indicated there is probably perhaps our biggest technical problem with access to inventory is paywalls where a lot of you know local publishers and larger publishers are protecting content behind paywalls you know we are certainly happy to work with those publishers and gain access to that content but you know short of that there there can be content that we simply can't scrape and if you noticed you know when we're talking about sort of the in the process of building this local news inventory there's a drop off in domains that we had access to and a, a fairly significant component of that were those domains those publishers who are protecting you know their the majority of their content behind paywalls. The other question there is, um, are we analyzing video? Um, we are actually not analyzing video. Um, we have the ability to, to look at transcripts of video and things like that, but not the video itself. Um, and the, the thing with video, of course, is people speak even in a, in a formal video, like a, like a news uh, broadcast, they speak in a way that's very different than you would write something down. And so it really requires a significantly different model. Um, and so that's something in, on our roadmap, but we do not have that yet. What is, what, maybe I missed it, uh, but what, what is your relationship with the advertiser like or are you not involved in that relationship at all but you're steering the I, I guess I got a little confused at that point yeah the advertisers are our customers that's who actually pays for for our service essentially um so they're basically paying us to provide a set of inventory basically to, mm -hmm. to for the inventory to bundle it up and provide it to them Okay, so that that's what I thought it was, and then, but you said you weren't actually serving the ads through any kind of ad code. You're using the existing network, so you're basically identifying the sites and then creating like an include list. Okay, I understand. Yeah, so, do you offer additional targeting to the advertisers? Um, I mean, are they able to? Are they just saying, "I just want to buy"? local credible news or are they saying um you know i want to buy local credible news in michigan about x you know are you able to also look at the context of the ad placements we don't do that because there's so many other solutions that already do that so we provide the inventory set and they can then filter it down to whatever they want including the audience you know gender and age and things like that, but also the location and all that within the existing ad platform. So there's plenty of ways to just do that on top of what we do. There's yeah. not another need. And, and that's really a common model within those ad platforms. You know, when advertisers and agencies are configuring campaigns, they'll usually, you know, have web interfaces with, you know, the uh, the DSPs, the, the demand side platforms that they're working with, where they'll be able to say, okay, yes, we want to turn on 
the noble filtering to gain the credibility scoring this sort of thing, along with whatever geographic targeting, demographic targeting for the users. So they'll combine these different pieces. And it's basically a big Venn diagram where we have our set of inventory and then they may filter in some other way they're interested in and their ads will be shown on whatever pages match you know, the overlap there.